This is something that Islam does not allow you to do. You cannot take an innocent life. It so happened that year per chance that the river Nile stopped flowing. Amr ibn al-As is now worried. He does not know what to do. He takes a pen and he writes a letter to the Amir al-Mu'mineen in Madinat al Munawwarah, explaining his situation. When Umar Farooq receives this letter, my friend, he picks up the pen and he, he responds to this letter. This is the first letter that is being addressed to a river. He is writing to the river Nile and this is what he says to the river Nile. Min Abdillahi Umar, Amir al-Mu'mineen, ila nili ahli Misr, amma baad, fa in kunta tajri min qibar فلا تجري وإن كان الواحد القحار يجريك فنسأل الله الواحد القحار أن يجريك this is what he says to the river Nile. From the servant of Allah, Umar, commander of the faithful, to the river Nile of the Egyptians. O oh, river Nile, if you flow on your own accord and will, then Umar has nothing to say to you. But if you flow with the will and command of Allah, then I ask the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi to make you flow. This letter is taken from Madinat al Munawwara to Egypt and is placed inside the river Nile. And when it is placed inside the river Nile, such was the impact that the river Nile began to flow. My friends, 1400 years have passed from that day to this day the river Nile has never dried Umar is that companion of Rasulullah who had such awe, such awe, my friend, that even Caesar, when the name of Umar would be, would be mentioned, would begin to see nightmares. Even Khors of Persia, when the name of Umar would be mentioned in his gathering, he would see nightmares. The earth would move in the direction that Umar would walk. Such was the awe and robe he had, my friends, that even the shaitan was afraid of him. And who says this? None other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Addressing Umar, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Umar, Walladi Nafsi Biyadi, Malakiak Shaitan Usalik and Fajan, Illa Salaka Fajan Gaira Fajik. O Umar, I swear by the one in whose hands my life is in. The Shaitan does not see you walking down some alleyway, except that the Shaitan hides, runs, he changes direction, he begins to go down a different street. Umar is that companion of Rasulullah whose opinions became religious institutions and continue to do so to this very day. 20 of the opinions of Umar received the sanction of revelation. Whatever Umar would say on the dunya, Allah would reveal the same verse of the Quran. In the early days of Islam, when Parda was not compulsory upon the believing women, the wives of Rasulullah did not observe the hijab just like the believing women. Sayyidina Umar Farooq he comes to our beloved Prophet and he requests and says, Ya Rasulullah, it would be a good thing if you ordered the Azwaj Mutahharat to observe the hijab because I have noticed all types of people come to your gathering. Good people come to your gathering. Bad people come to your gathering. So it would be a good thing if you ordered the Azwaj Mutahharat to observe the hijab. This was the desire and the wish of Umar. Allahu Akbar from the heavens. Allah reveals exactly the same verse. And the opinion of Umar receives the sanction of revelation. And Allah orders Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhan nabi, kulli azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'mineen yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihin. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell your wives tell your daughters tell the believing women to draw veils over their bodies my friends in the early days of islam when abdullah bin ubay ibn salud the, the the leader of the hypocrites when he died out of risk out of a mere mercy because rasulullah was a mercy to mankind even to his enemies he was a mercy so when abdullah bin ubay ibn salud died out of mercy and kindness Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam desired to offer his janazah. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu objected. The opinion of Umar received the sanction of revelation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ke wala tusalli ala ahadin minuhum maata abadun wala tukum ala kabri. Ke never offer the janazah of any one of these people. Another occasion, a Jew says to Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Verily, that Jibra'il, your friend Muhammad, makes a mention of, he is an enemy of ours. Sayyidina Umar responds, yeah, Verily, whoever is an enemy of Allah and his angels, Allah is his enemy. The opinion of Umar received the sanction of revelation. And Allah reveals exact the same verse of the Quran. On another occasion, he comes to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa and he requests. And he says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahi wa O Messenger of Allah, it would be a good thing if you made the place 
of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. The opinion of Umar received the sanction of revelation. And Allah orders Muhammad وسلم, in the Quran, Make the place of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. 20 such opinions of Umar received the sanction of revelation. Whatever he would say, Allah would order Rasulullah to do the same. Such is the status of Umar that it is a Friday, it is a Jumu'ah, and Sayyidina Umar Farooq is delivering a khutbah, he's delivering a sermon, and as he's delivering a sermon, all of a sudden, he stops, he pauses, and then he shouts, Ya Sariya al Jabal, O Sariya, go to the mountains. The, the congregation is confused. Who is he speaking to? What is he referring to? When he finishes the khutbah, he is questioned with regards to this. He explains to the congregation, yeah, as I was delivering the sermon, a thought crossed my mind that our Muslim brothers are being defeated by the polytheists in a battle which is taking place in such a such a land. So I told them, go towards the mountain and launch an attack. Allah will bless you with victory. The remarkable thing is, my young friends, after a month, the news reaches Umar. And the, the, and the person comes to him and says, Oh Amir al muminin we were in a distant land. We were fighting with the Kuffar. The Kuffar were on the verge of defeating us. And as they were on the verge of defeating us, all of a sudden we heard your voice. And you were saying to us, Ya Sariya al Jabal, O Sariya, go to the mountains and launch an attack. We acted upon your advice. And Allah blessed us with victory. He is that companion of Rasulullah wasallam. that there is a famine in Medina al Munawwara. The Muslimah, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een and their children are suffering. There hasn't been a rain for a long time. The, the children are suffering. The men are suffering. The women are suffering. The animals are suffering. They come to Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. He leaves Medina to Munawwara and he offers two rakat salah. And after having offered two rakat salah, he raises his hand and he begs for Allah's mercy. And he says, Allahumma inna nastaghfiruka wa nastaskhik. Oh Allah, I beg you, forgive all our sins. Forgive our major sins. Forgive our minor sins. Oh Allah, we are suffering. Our children are suffering, our wives are suffering, our mothers are suffering, our animals are suffering. Show our mercy upon us, send upon us your rain. My friends, he does not move from that place till Allah responds and showers the Ummah with rain. The remarkable thing is, as time passes one day, a Bedouin comes to Sayyidina Umar Farooq and he says to the Amir al-Mu'mineen, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, whilst we were in our village on such a day and such a time, all of a sudden in the heavens we saw a cloud and from that cloud we heard a voice saying the voice was saying Atak al Ghosu Aba Hafsin. O Umar, Aba Hafs was the title of Umar. The voice was saying, O Umar, the help of Allah is coming to you. When they looked at this, my friends, they realized this coincided with the exact time when Umar had raised his hands and was asking Allah for help. My friends, from a distant place, people could hear voices from clouds saying, O oh, Umar, the help is coming towards you. This was the status of Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. Yet the remarkable thing, my young friends, is the remarkable thing is, in the early days of Islam, there was no one, there was no one that was a bigger enemy of the Quran, that was a bigger enemy of the Muslims, and that was a bigger enemy than Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. Nobody could even imagine the likes of Umar would ever say La ilaha illallah. There was not even glimmer of hope, so much so that the likes of Amir would mock and he would say, with regards to Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, he would say, فَلَا يُسْلِمْ أَلَّذِي رَأَيْتْ حَتَّى يُسْلِمْ حِمَارُ الْخَطَّابِ that he will not embrace Islam till his father's donkey will embrace Islam. Meaning just as this is impossible for a donkey to say La ilaha illallah, everyone else may declare La ilaha illallah, but this person Umar is such a staunch enemy of Islam that this person will never say La ilaha illallah. But my friends, what did they know? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in store for Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. What did they know? He gives the kingdom to whom he wishes. He takes the kingdom away from whom he wishes. He gives respects to whom he wishes. He disgraces whom he wishes. What did they know? 
Nobody has the power to guide anyone. It is the Allah that is the Hadi. Allah is the Mudil. Allah is the one that guides. Allah is the one that misguides. What did they know? That this, that this same Umar was going to become al Farooq, was going to become Man Farraka Bain al Haqqi wal Batil, that will distinguish between right and wrong, that will distinguish between halal and haram, that will distinguish between Islam and Kufr. What did they know? That the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he would make for Umar, Allahumma Izz al Islam, be Umar ibn al Khattab, or be Abi Jahl ibn Hisham. Oh Allah, I beg you, strengthen Islam with the likes of Umar or Abu Jahl ibn Hisham. Whoever is more dear to you was on the verge of being accepted. What did they know? That the dream of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the dream of a prophet is revelation. 